Hi everyone, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface. I know this has been a long time coming, but a lot of you guys and gals have been asking me to discuss the new Superman series. So, two episodes in, here we go. And from here on in, if you'd like me to do a weekly... Well, I don't technically do reviews. Let's just call them breakdowns uh, of the episode. Uh, then let me know by thumb upping the video or placing a comment in the comment section down below. I am looking and listening. So last week, uh, or the week before, whichever one now, I don't know, uh, the debut of Superman and Lois arrived. Uh, the pitch that they gave through uh, the media uh, made the show sound not so good. However, the trailers that they had released for the show looked very promising and encouraging. So we had the visual side, the actual show, and then we had the, you know, newsletter, whatever, press release, whatever you want to call it, that goes out, which didn't sound so good. Fortunately, I think for us, it was the press release that was the thing that didn't do the show any favours whatsoever. Because when I watched the debut episode, I was absolutely blown away uh, by how good it is. I thought it was great. I really thought it was great. And particularly the first 10 or so minutes where the show very uh, succinctly goes through the life of Clark Kent up to now, shows him arriving on Earth, shows the Kent parents, Martha and Jonathan, finding him, uh, his father having the heart attack and dying when he was young, uh, him growing up and donning the Superman suit, and before he dons his current version, uh, he puts on, of course, the first ever version uh, that he wore in the comics, which is just phenomenal to see. And I got to say, I'm just loving this outfit. I think the outfit looks absolutely great. The red pants are back on. Uh, you know, they've padded it in the right areas just to make it look a little bit beefier. Uh, it doesn't look silly. I think it looks phenomenal. Uh, and when he gives the cap back to the little boy and the, and the, uh, the little boy says, I like your suit. Uh, he says, thanks, my mum made it for me, which is a nod to the comics as well. Um, so there's a, a, a lovely bit of fan service put there. And of course, behind, he's catching the car, which is reminiscent of Action Comics, uh, number one, Superman's debut back in uh, 1938. Uh, so there were some wonderful little moments. Uh, and then the current suit, meeting Lois, the Fortress of Solitude, uh, proposing to her, all these great things. And it wraps it up really, really nicely. Then it goes into how he was uh, sacked from the Daily Planet. The Daily Planet were making cuts as it had been bought out by a billionaire, media mogul. Uh, and I think we can all uh, relate to big tech uh, taking over things, changing things. And so he was a casualty of that. Uh, and then going to Smallville uh, to see that his mum had had a stroke and passed on. So within the first really early part of the episode, uh, we get a Clark Kent who is married to Lois, has two teenage boys, and both his parents have now uh, left him. And you could be easily forgiven for thinking this is going to devolve into Lois dominating the series. It is Superman and Lois after all. She has a name in the credit so she by all rights has to play an important role in this series but as the cw normally does uh, the woman will become the dominant force and the male will become the uh, effeminate cuck but no the relationship that was written between clark and lois is is wonderful and the way that they talk to each other the way that they behave with each other uh, you can easily see why these two people love each other. Uh, I often find with CW shows, 
uh, particularly with things like The Flash, for instance, uh, you're just looking at relationships and going, why are they with that person? Why are they with that person? That person is awful. Awful. But, you know, they have to write it that the, the man is googly-eyed for the gal, but the gal's just a bitch. So it, it was great to see that there was this uh, great dynamic uh, between Lois and Clark. Uh, this this great dynamic that um, you could see how, how they try and hold their family together. Now, the boys... Uh, the boys were going to be an issue, I thought. Um, because when, again, in the press release, they described the sons, uh, it looked like one of them was going to be your typical jock and the other one was going to be different. And knowing the CW, different can mean so many different things. <laughs> And because he was going to be on the spectrum, he suffers from uh, personality disorder. Uh, it, it could have been so easy for them to have really have gone overboard. However, the, the, the typical jock wasn't your typical jock. He was uh, a son that loves sports. Uh, he loves his football. Uh, quarterback, where, wherever, you know, in whichever metropolis school he was from but instead of having uh, an adversarial relationship with his brother uh he actually has um a very good relationship with him uh, he looks out for his brother he he understands the uh disorder that his brother has and he understands how uh difficult it can be for him uh, and so he he's there he's very protective of him and i, I really like that and it's reciprocated too. The the younger brother can see what his his older brother is sort of sacrificing, you know, sort of holding back uh, to look after him, and um, it doesn't go unnoticed, and it and it doesn't go unsaid. It you know it, it, it is mentioned and it is talked about. So when we there was a leak and we knew that the the you know the the kid that was on the spectrum was going to get some powers uh <laughs> yeah again we were kind of concerned i used the royal we um most people who i spoke to we were kind of concerned that they were gonna you know use this as a metaphor for all kinds of all kinds of stuff but in the first two in the first episode i want to stick to the first episode for the moment before jumping to episode two and there's a very specific reason why uh, and, and when he did manifest his powers, uh, it was dealt with subtly. Uh, it was dealt with uh, cleverly. And uh, it, it just worked. Um, and so how that's going to develop going forward, well, we'll see in episode two when I, when I get to that part. One of the things which I did realise after the uh, show had ended was... I... <laughs> was I just, I knew, I knew something was going to happen. When I finished watching the show, uh, I said to myself, I'm going to go online, I'm going to look at some reviews, and they're going to be attacking this show. And they're going to be attacking this show for lack of diversity. Because the show had a, a, a very large, predominantly white cast uh not only that there was a predicament uh within the show where uh the the kid the younger kid the kid on the spectrum had met up with a girl who he met last summer and they went out to a party in a quarry and she did seem very friendly with him she did seem taken with him and they are uh discussing their issues you know she knew that he was taking pills and he tells her you know sort of why and uh, she opens up to him about some pill abuse that she did as well and so he kind of felt this kindred spirit and uh as you do when you're that age in the party you he he went in for a kiss and uh he went he was kissing her her boyfriend uh, came 
smashing in. Get off my girl! As you would if you saw your girlfriend being snogged by somebody else. I'd go in like a bull in a china shop. Or I, I would have done if that was if I was that age, for sure. And uh, her boyfriend was was big and black. And it was just, it was just, from my, from my perspective, it was just wonderful to see that the the writers weren't afraid uh, to, to utilize a black character in that way. We've seen uh, black characters in recent years so, uh, so effeminized um, and just, and just made these absolute uh, planks of wood with devoid of personality, devoid of anger devoid of emotion um just just you know placid um just yeah literally just like placid effeminate nothings and so it was it was kind of uh great to see and it started a fight between uh everybody and you know his heat vision went off and that's when he utilized his powers for the first time then at the end of the episode, Superman, who had been fighting uh, Doom Guy, <laughs> I mean, his suit looked straight out of Doom. He'd been fighting this guy, Doom Guy. Uh, the guy uh, took off his helmet at the end, and uh, he was black and uh, called uh, Luther, Captain Luther. Which we discovered was was from a a different world. So is it a, a Lex Luthor from a different world? Maybe, or is the surname just Luthor? Who knows? Uh, or is it a descendant of Lex? Who knows? Uh, but they were set up initially as the antagonist. So in this episode, we'd seen a predominantly white cast and and. Uh, two black characters which were in antagonistic roles i haven't seen that in in decades <laughs> i haven't seen that in 10 years um so it was it was refreshing to see but obviously i knew that the show would get attacked for it because of course the the woke generation and lo and behold there were some there were some uh review sites who were calling it uh, a white supremacist dream and all this absolute garbage uh when they just you could tell they came in with an agenda because the writing of the show was great the the directing was brilliant it was beautiful uh it was well shot it was well acted the script was very tight very good indeed it didn't feel as if there was any wasted moments uh, at all everything felt relevant everything felt good the special effects were excellent. And I and I say that with shocked eyes because we're talking about the CW here. However, I did take everything with a wee pinch of salt because we are talking about a pilot episode. A pilot episode which would go uh, to the powers that be and then the powers that be would uh, turn around and say, okay, uh, we'd like you to make these changes uh, going forward as we put it into production. So uh, from episode one to episode two, you could you could see a, um, there could be a huge difference uh, in in the way that characters are or, or portrayed or whether or not they exist anymore or uh, <laughs> whether or not they've miraculously changed the color of their skin, etc. So when I watched episode two, I was absolutely stunned uh, to realize they'd changed nothing. I, I didn't tonally, visually, or character-wise see any changes whatsoever. None. It was as if the first episode left off and we went straight into the second episode. And it was it was great. It was absolutely great to see. I was like, Bro, this is wonderful because... They clearly saw what they were trying to do. They clearly saw the quality of the show, the quality of the writing. And I, I, I've always loved Tyler Hocklin as Superman. He's just, he's had such a raw deal. I mean, we were calling him Cuckman or Super Cuck because, because the CW had absolutely annihilated his character in Supergirl. 
because of the the horrible progressive uh people that get hold of these series so to see tyler hocklin actually uh be allowed to shine and and truly shine and show what he's got in this character showed that he can be a great superman you know and that's that's not poking anything at, at, at any other superman that's existed you know each superman is is in my eyes is has, has been very good in their own unique ways and tyler hocklin is the same uh so in episode two uh we get the same tone uh we get uh fallout from the the party um because it was the jock son that started to fight the girl's boyfriend to protect his brother uh he's getting a hard time at school now that they've moved to smallville uh which again puts that big black dude in an antagonistic role uh which again is 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 something we just don't see anymore um and and he's finding it difficult to to get uh anything going with the football team the kid who's got the powers gets taken away to the fortress of solitude where we meet Jarrell, uh which was wonderful to see as well and uh he ran through some tests and uh the construct of Jarrell was just like yeah he, he ain't he ain't gonna get much more powerful than he is now he's never gonna be you he's never gonna be you which again um made the kid feel so bad because for the first time in probably his life he felt good about himself he felt uh as as if uh he had something positive going for him uh, and so that that pulled him down a bit and there was a great exchange between the two brothers they had a bit of a ding dong but it wasn't a um it wasn't a forced ding dong uh, it was about the older brother talking about how he he kind of like you know sacrificed certain things for his younger brother and and all this kind of stuff and looking after him and um i think essentially it was more not jealousy out of the powers the the kid hasn't shown any jealousy i think it was just it was frustration and um i think he was sad i think he was sad that uh, because his his brother had developed powers and the kents didn't know what to do with him they were keeping him away from school that he didn't have his brother at school anymore he didn't have his uh his brother to look after he didn't have his um his kind of support as well there so he kind of felt i think he felt very exposed and and um very vulnerable uh, but this is how good the writing is the writing shines through in it and it goes through these elements um we discovered more about luther and captain luther and the fact that captain luther came from another world where the black suit superman uh was tearing through people destroyed their world uh, so there was the, the evil version now there has been a black suit superman appear um i think during one of the crossover events i that i didn't watch thank god uh, so i don't know if it was that one specifically uh or it's or it's another one uh, but uh, the reason why this Captain Luther is trying to destroy Superman is he's trying to destroy him because he believes he will turn evil like the other Superman did. So there's a little more complexity with his story now. So this antagonist um, has, uh, you know, he, he has, when I say good intentions, uh, he he's he's trying to prevent something that he believes will happen that might not happen uh so again it's 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 complex it, it's it's not it's not black and white lois had a, a great little story where um she talked about uh, well she is investigating the person that took over the planet the person that is going to bring jobs to smallville and she discovered that he's you know he's been other places and he's uh you know essentially created jobs with less than minimum wage and then dipped out the area and, and just left the area to to rot and um she wrote she wrote this expose on him which she put to the daily planet to print but he now is, he now owns the daily planet so he altered the story uh, and so when he altered the story lois wasn't happy quit the daily planet 
and took this role in the Smallville Gazette. Um, and it was and and uh, Bitsy Tullock, Elizabeth Tullock. Uh, I I like uh, I I do like I've liked her since Grimm, and uh, I think there's a tenacity to her, uh, and it kind of shone through in this episode as well. So to give her something to do that felt relevant that felt interesting um i enjoyed i thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed well first of all let's uh have a look at how it's doing and it has been reviewed uh, renewed very quickly for a season two which is great to see uh, apparently it did very well on the streaming platform and what's really interesting is uh Mark Pedowitz, the CEO of the CW Network, this is an an idiot who said that they they want less males watching the CW. Yes, he said that. They had a 50-50 split of male and females, and he said, we want less males to watch the CW. We want it to be about 55% females and 45% male. The phenomenal, uh, the phenomenal multi-platform debut of Superman and Lois, which delivered us uh, for us in a big way on both a linear and streaming basis, is a testament to the creativity, hard work, and dedication of the talented people who work tirelessly in front and behind the camera, especially in this challenging environment. Uh, it was the highest rated night for the CW since the end of January 2019, so for two years which is absolutely incredible now ratings wise it's it's not it's it's not doing when i say it's not doing great for overnights i, I was really hoping it was going to do better uh in the streaming side of it sure but like i said it's it's the overnights where the advertisers hit luckily the the demo is high because for a cw show and i don't think the ratings are indicative of the quality of the show i think the ratings are indicative of the quality of the network the cw because the cw has has tanked its shows it's absolutely tanked its shows with with social justice and woke shite uh i i have a weekly breakdown of batwoman which is essentially a once a week piss take piss take of a tv show because it's so bad uh so yeah I, I think it's just so many people have been turned off to the cw uh, they simply weren't there to um to really bolster this up but it started with a 1.745 million with a 0.37 uh, demo and then um, dropped about thirty percent uh, this week to a point uh, one uh, to a one point two three eight. Sorry, I'm not used to the CW having a one before a zero. <laughs> and the demo uh, dropped to point uh, two seven, which is still decent, still a very decent demo, uh, considering. Uh, however, <laughs> it's still. I think the biggest uh, rated show for the CW so far, uh, it beat The Flash, which debuted at just less than a million, uh, 0.998. Uh, that uh, debuted at, uh, uh, at for season seven. Um, and uh, it's got about three times as many viewers as Batwoman. So it's going to be interesting to see where this goes going forward. Uh, whether it has a similar pattern to the CW shows because the CW shows or whether it starts to find its its sort of place where it hovers uh, uh, and then it'll hover there for probably the majority of the season and maybe just dip a little towards the end. Uh, but the show's quality is is excellent. It truly is. The writing's great. The acting's great. The directing has been very good indeed. Uh, and I can't wait for the next episode. I legitimately can't. It's been a show which I have thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed. I know. <laughs> and that scares me too. So there you go, folks. Hope you enjoyed the vid. If you did, do give it a thumbs up. 
and also subscribe to the channel follow me on social media on youtube for live streaming links are in the description box down below i'll be back with some more stuff very soon you take care bye for now